Yeah, in addition to Arduino, I'm also actually doing a postdoc here at Berkeley with uh, Bjorn Hartman, who was around somewhere, but maybe he's downstairs. And um, I'm going to talk about a project today that, that kind of crosses both of these worlds. So trying to bring uh, machine learning to the maker community in uh, supporting novice analysis of real-time sensor data. Um, and I'll explain what that means. But um, this is a project with a, a bunch of people. So Ben Zhang in the back there is a PhD student here. And Audrey Leung, also a master's student here, have been helping me out. And of course, uh, Bjorn um, advising. So I thought I would start by actually just showing you guys a demo because I think that makes it much clearer. So the, the, the basic idea is, um, you know, there's all kinds of sensors out there, right? And we've got now lots of opportunities, lots of breakout boards, lots of kind of software libraries for getting data out of those sensors, right? But I feel like oftentimes, um, and this isn't necessarily to pick on Adafruit, but I feel like a lot of times when we're working with these sensors, what we do with them in kind of the maker community often ends with, you know, hey, I got a number out of my accelerometer. Isn't that cool? Um, but then when it comes time to say, hey, I want to build like a gesture recognition system, you know, and I want to like play tennis with physical motion, or, um, you know, I have a microphone and I want to identify different kinds of, of audio sounds or things like that, um, it's, it can be a really challenging problem, right? And I think probably a lot of you guys have, have tried to solve or solve these problems, and you know how, how complicated some of them can be. Um, at the same time, there's all of this um, kind of machine learning, all of these amazing people doing all of these amazing algorithms. This is kind of one website listing a whole bunch of them. Um, and you can see there's, there's so many, you can't even read it. Um, but, uh, and, and this is actually not even, not really necessarily my field of expertise. So I think there's people in the audience that know a lot more about the, the particular, about all the, the machine learning than I do. But the basic idea is there's, there's all of this, all of this great knowledge out there about how to extract kind of higher level information out of these sensor, sensors. But that, I think, ability doesn't always translate to the maker community. And so this is, this is kind of an initial rough attempt to start thinking about what that could look like. Um, and it's, it's very early and, and there's, um, but let me at least just kind of give you a little bit of a preview. So the idea is here, I have my interface showing live data streaming in. Um, so I've got my Arduino board with my accelerometer on it. And you can see as I wave it up and down, we've got um, red, green, and blue lines. You may or may not be able to see all three colors, but there's three axis. Um, and um, what I can do is I've recorded some kind of different uh, examples of some different gestures that I can make. So I can make like a forehand gesture. And you can see it's printing out. It's maybe a little small, but you can see it's printing out forehand there every time I make this forehand gesture. Every time I make a backhand, it's printing out backhand. Um, I can serve as well. So I used to play tennis as a kid. Um, so I figured that was a good example. Um, you can see the serve maybe was not always being recognized. So I can um, just very easily record some new examples and say, hey, th these are all serves too. And you can, you can kind of see in that third, uh, that third box there, it, it added some new samples. Um, and now I can retrain my, my algorithm, my underlying machine learning algorithm. And I can serve. And hopefully now it will recognize it better because I've given it some more examples to match against. Um, and I can make a, I can record a new gesture. So um, I'll just show you that real quick. Oops. All right, so now I can make my gesture. And now you can see it detecting my new gesture. Um, so the idea is I showed you uh, one example, which was with um, gesture recognition and accelerometer, right? But there are, there are lots of sensors out there that you might want to extract this kind of higher level information from. And, there's a lot of experts out there that are really good at writing these algorithms to extract this kind of, of information. So the idea here is to leverage all those experts, have them create rich examples. So in, just as kind of Arduino has, has all these examples that people can download and use and modify to their own uh, needs, the idea here is that the expert can write a little bit of code on the left, which is kind of Arduino style. Um, and 
this is configuring the underlying kind of machine learning algorithm that's going to do the recognition. So in this case, like, I was using a dynamic time warping algorithm for doing gesture recognition. And then <clears throat> the end user, the novice, can open up the user interface, record new examples of, in this case, it's gestures, but it could also be different audio um, sounds. It could be maybe you had a bunch of touch sensors and you want to detect kind of where or how someone is touching an object. So you can, you can record your own kind of examples, your own training data of things that you want to recognize. And then you use the underlying algorithm that the expert has, has created to do that recognition. And you can see the, um, the predictions live in the interface, and you can also stream those predictions um, to other systems. So you can stream them back to the Arduino, or you can um, stream them to like other network systems or things like that. And so right now, yeah, we have um, input um, from lots of different streams. So you can get it from the Arduino. We can read the onboard microphone on your computer. But yeah, and then the processing happens on the computer right now. Um, we're looking into having the machine learning running on the Arduino as well. There's some amount of it. We're using a C++ library, so there's some amount of it that is portable to the Arduino, but that's still kind of a work in progress right now. Um, so a little bit, uh, I'm not sure, but yeah, to answer, so you can see there's an ASCII serial stream. That just means read ASCII data coming over the serial port from the Arduino. There's a recognition pipeline. Um, we set up DTW means dynamic time warping. It's a kind of algorithm that you use to recognize these kind of signals that happen over time. And then you have the interface, as you guys saw, um, where you can record different, different classes of data and have them recognized. And, you know, like I said, the idea is that it works with lots of different kinds of sensors, right? So here's an example um, where it's a slightly different code using uh, the microphone input. And so you can see there's an audio stream at the top there. And it's taking an FFT, for you who know what an FFT is, is a pretty simple, um, simple pipeline. Again, the idea is that this is something that for an expert who knows how to do kind of signal processing and, and audio recognition would be a pretty easy thing for them to write. Um, and it's just doing some basic recognition. But then the idea is that you as the end user can kind of see that data and record, say, your own sounds that you wanted to recognize. And it will, it will recognize those and let you incorporate that recognition into your larger interactive project. So one of the challenges that, that, that you run into when you try to do this kind of a thing is you know, everyone has a different sensor, right? So you might have a different accelerometer than me, a different microphone, this kind of thing. And so, and those all behave slightly differently, right? So what we're building in is a system to allow, again, the expert example author to write a little bit of code that handles that translation, um, say, between, you know, different accelerometer ranges or different um, microphone responsive, responsivity curves or things like that. Um, and what they do is they specify, hey, you as the end user, these are the samples you need to collect. So like in the accelerometer case, it might be, you know, take the accelerometer, uh, rest it flat on the table, collect a sample of data like that, and then collect another sample where you're waving it around. Um, and then the code that the example author has written can figure out sort of the properties of the accelerometer from, that, from those examples and use that to um, to sort of calibrate the system so that the, the data works across different people. Uh, similarly, there, there's often like a lot of parameters you need to tune, and these are often kind of obscure and, and complicated things. Um, and there might be a lot of different parameters that you know, most people maybe don't need to mess with. So the idea is that there's a way for the example author to specify, hey, here are the parameters that, that you guys might care about. And here's a description of what they do and how you tweak them. And then you get a GUI that just lets you kind of adjust those um, on the fly in the interface. Um, so that, that's kind of the overview. There is, like, the code is online. Um, it is on GitHub. I would call it, I'm not even sure it's an alpha version. It's kind of like really rough. It's, it's Mac only. It uh, kind of requires you to compile this big Xcode project. But if anyone wants to try it um, and that doesn't, hasn't scared you off, then that would be cool. Um, there are uh, lots of bugs to fix and lots of features to add just in, in this version. Um, also, 
uh, one of the things is we really need to create more examples. So like I said, we're not necessarily the machine learning expert. So hopefully if there are people out there that, that have expertise in these different areas, you know, come talk to me. I'd love to have you maybe um, build some examples that we could, we could add to this system. Um, and then hopefully the idea would be to like build a second generation of this where it's cross-platform and it's kind of a little bit nicer to run. Um, and then eventually to build an online repository of examples. So if you wanted to do something like you know, gesture recognition or you wanted to have a thing that could recognize when a person was talking or you had some crazy idea for, I don't know, you wanted to know like when a truck was driving by based on the audio coming from the microphone that you could just find someone who had maybe created an example that was suitable for that application and download it and tweak it um, so that it would work for you. Uh, so that's it. Thank you. And uh, any, any questions? Um, we built the hardware our, ourselves by looking at the circuits from the GitHub, from GitHub and stuff. Um, we can download the software online. Yeah. And this will work for sensors of all kinds, or is this specifically for accelerometers? No, no. So the, yeah, the idea is that it will work for sensors of all kinds. Right now, we have a few examples. So there's a basic accelerometer example. There's a basic um, sound example. There's a basic color sensor example. But the hope is that as more people find out about it, they will build lots of these little example programs that work with, with lots of different sensors. Uh, all right, cool. Thank you very much. Thank you.